Welcome to another video from the Voyager Middle School STEAM Lab. In this video we're going to be uh, matching third angle projections to objects by making, sol by making the objects in SOLIDWORKS. So we, uh, this is an, uh, an example of what we do as a quiz in my class. Uh, I give my students a third angle projection, which is what we use in the United States. In Europe, they do a first angle projection where they pr project it from the first quadrant instead of the third quadrant. Um, but we can set this up in SOLIDWORKS and really easily check to make sure that this object that has these three views, this top view, this front view, and this side view, should match the top, front, and view, side view of the object that you create. So how did I do this? How did I make this object? Sometimes what I'm trying to quiz here in my in my class is can you look at these three and have this in your mind and sometimes the act of making it makes it in your mind so I will show you how to do this we'll do a different one um, and we'll, we'll we'll get that all set up but the first thing I want you to do is I want to make sure that you're in the right view mode so if you're in the United States and you're doing a third angle projection like we are you want to make sure you switch your view mode to third angle the way you do that is you go to options and under options, you go to the display settings. And at the bottom of the display settings, it says projection type for four view viewport. You want third angle if you're doing TANSI specifications, like in the United States. If you're using ISO specifications, like Europe and the rest of the world, you would do first angle. Uh, SolidWorks, I think first angle is the default. So I switched to the third angle. And that way, when I go up here and switch my view orientation, I can choose and look at each one individually, and I can memorize these little control key shortcuts to switch them very quickly. But I can also look at them all at once by choosing four view. When you choose four, four view, I get my top, front, and right view, just like in my orthographic projection. And then I get a trimetric up here so I can see the object at a three-quarter angle. So we're going to do like this to make the object. So now I'm going to look at my quiz card that I'm given, and maybe I'm given card number two here. And maybe I don't know exactly what this looks like. I don't really understand how it all goes together. I don't really understand that these lines line up with these lines, so they must be the same object. Maybe I don't get that right away. Um, so what can I do in order to make this object, especially if I don't understand it quite yet? What I can do is I can pick one of these sides, and I can sketch the outline. By picking one of these sides and sketching the outline, I can extrude that as a start. So I'm going to just pick the top view here, and I'm going to extrude this shape right here. So to do that, I'm going to go back into SolidWorks, and in my top view here, I'm going to go to Sketch, and I'm going to draw that shape, and I could do it by drawing rectangles and trimming the lines I don't need, or I can just draw with lines. It tells me what plane do I want to start drawing on. I want to draw on the top plane, and I'm going to draw... But I'm going to use the references, see how the, I got the yellow vertical indication to make sure I'm vertical. And I'm going to draw like so. If I'm trying to get this totally proportional, I should be measuring all of these with smart dimension. But if I'm just trying to meet the bare minimum requirements for this quiz, I just need to make sure that my overall size is less than 40 by 40 by 40 millimeters. So pick your biggest side and smart dimension it by clicking smart dimension, click the side, click here and then type in 40 and that'll make sure that that side is 40 and all the other ones will shrink down accordingly so there is my top view um, let's go back and look at it again that looks like the outline of my top view it doesn't have these three boxes up here but it's got the outline we'll add the three boxes as we go so now I'm ready to make that 3d because my front and right view don't look right at all so I'm gonna go to features and choose extrude and extrude it up some amount um, if I'm not sure how much, I, I could just extrude some, but I could also check the card now. So kind of starting to look like the bottom part here. See those three boxes there? So if I look at my top, my front view, I got those three boxes. So that looks pretty good. If I want to change how much, I click the arrow and I can drag it up and down to make it the, the amount that I want. Check mark to finish. Oops, I missed. Try again. Check mark to finish. And I've got that view and that view going. Um, so far, this is what my object looks like. So if I look at my view here, I can't see this dashed line. In order to see dashed lines, I have to switch my view mode. So I have to click in the panel I want to switch. And then right here where it says display style, i got to switch it. If I want to show those as dashed lines, I choose hidden lines visible. And it gives me that dashed hidden line. So this looks like pretty much like what I've got on the bottom part. But you can see the top part goes up higher. 
And you see there's no seam here. So probably it goes all the way out to the, the right edge. This is the right edge. And if I look here, I can see this part goes up higher, and then there's a part in the middle that goes up even higher. So let's make those two parts. Let's start by adding a rectangle on top of my object. I don't want to put it on the top plane. I want to put it on top of my object. So here's how I do that. I don't want to, I want to make sure nothing is selected. Right now, my boss is extruded. I want nothing selected. If I have nothing selected, I'm just going to click on empty space up here. Nothing is selected. My planes aren't selected. Nothing is selected. That way, when I go to sketch and say I want to add a rectangle, it says, I don't know where you want to add it. And I can click on the top of the object, or I can click on the top of the object in the trimetric. And you can see it's highlighted in all three of my view modes. Now I can draw my shape. And you can see it's happening in all four viewports at the same time. So I'm going to start in this corner. I'm going to go down. And I can kind of maybe do some measuring or find midpoints and I can draw myself a rectangle. That rectangle I want to extrude, so I'm going to make it go upwards. Now, maybe um, I'm going to try something a little different here. I'm going to go all the way up to this top, because I, I know that, at least in the middle, I want it that tall. So I'm going to make it go all the way up to that height. You could also have it go up to the other height and then add another rectangle and go up, but I'm going to try something a little bit different. I can use these arrows over here to increase. I can scroll in and scroll out, and you can see it's synchronizing my views here so I can really see. So maybe that's the top of the middle. So I'm going to go with that. Okay, check mark. And what I, I keep clicking the wrong button. I, what I want to do is push these parts down, get rid of those parts. So I can do that again. Click on nothing, so nothing is selected. Choose sketch a rectangle. I want to sketch it right on top of this, so I click on the top of it. And I can even line up with some of these parts. Maybe, maybe I can. No, there it goes. I can go straight up vertically from that. Oops. Well, maybe I'm having a hard time. Let's go this way. Well, no, I don't want to. So I'm having a hard time trying to make my screen too small. There we go. There's one of my rectangles. Now this rectangle, I actually want to go down and into it. So in order to go down and into it, when I go to Features, I don't want to extrude and add to it. I want to actually do Extruded Cut. And you can see it's going all the way down to this surface by default because that's how far I went last time was 21 millimeters. Um, I can do some math here and say, actually, I know I only want to go 10 and a half because I want to go halfway down. If I go 10 and a half, it goes halfway down. I can hit the check mark. That's one way to do it. So there I'm getting that square there. I'm getting that, that part gone. Another way to do it is like, I just really want this part gone. I can just go sketch and click right on that part and say, I want to get rid of that part. Let's see if I can line this rectangle up. It's not really wanting to line up. There it goes. It's giving me a reference there. That way I can make sure they're the same height. And then this time, if I exit my sketch, which is not what I did before, before I just went into features, I can actually just select the edge of the sketch and it gives me this orange arrow here. And if I just click and drag that arrow, oops, let's try that again. Click the arrow and drag it. I can extrude the object. Ooh, but it should subtract. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, it doesn't want to subtract. Well, let's go ahead and uh, undo that. Control Z. Let's take this sketch and we'll do what we did before then. Extruded cut. And I'm going to go all the way through. I can choose to go part of the way through, or I can go all the way through um, by extending that arrow. I want to go all the way through, so I'm going to hit the check mark. There we go. So now I want to check this for reals. So I'm going to look at my object, and I'm going to see all of those lines, and I'm going to make sure I have all of those same lines, even the dashed lines. Remember, you can switch the view style, the display style, if you'd like to make it match your card a little bit more. Show your hidden lines if you need to. That object is the object right here on number two. So that's how I'm going to check and make sure that I've done the right thing. Once I've got it made, I can also do stuff like I can say like, well, actually I wanna move this in a little bit. I can just, oops, cancel. Did I do it wrong? So I got two things on top of each other. Let's try this. I can grab this side right here and I can drag it out maybe. Oh, it won't let me because of the 40. But I can grab some things that aren't constrained because I haven't set them to any sort of smart dimension, and I can adjust them, which will adjust my proportions. 
And in order to get 100%, I need to match proportion. So if things are equally distant, they need to be equally distant. That's, that's it for this video. Hopefully that helps you understand how orthographic projections work, and hopefully it'll help you if you're taking the quiz in my class um, do a good job. Remember, you can try up to four different random cards and then get your highest grade out of those four when you turn them in.